morning everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're drying cows off. In the last video you saw me put that set of cows separate. Today we're actually gonna be drying them off. It's just after seven in the morning. The whole morning shift is done except for these 12 cows that still need to be dried off. So these are the two dry cow treatments we give to everyone that gets dry. Uh, this is an actual treatment. It's gonna cure up any mastitis that a cow may have currently. It'll also prevent her from getting it during her dry period. And then this is a blocker. It's literally just a bit of paste that goes on the inside of the cow's teat and it blocks the teat end and does not allow any bacteria or tiny little particles to go up inside of their teats. So there's a couple people in the parlor right now actually giving those dry cow treatments to the cows I just showed you guys in the teats. And then I'm up top giving them another vaccine underneath the skin. The vaccine I'm giving them is called JVAC and this is another mastitis prevention protocol that we have on our dairy farm. If you guys are unfamiliar with what I'm saying when I'm putting a cow dry, uh, basically what that means is we're drying off a cow for the last two months of her pregnancy to give her a break before she's gonna calve again. So a cow will produce milk for 305 days after she's given birth. Uh, typically three months after she gives birth, she'll become pregnant again, and then she will be put dry two months before uh, she's gonna calve again. And then when she calves, that's the start of her next lactation or her next 305 day stint of producing milk. Definitely a bit of adjustment for these ladies in terms of climate. It is cold out today, minus 20. So uh, just gonna make sure there's good bedding in that corral. They will put on a winter coat incredibly quickly though. So they'll uh, be looking fancy, staying warm. Hopefully in her next lactation, this lady's gonna hit 100,000 liters. One of the oldest cows in the farm. Look forward to her coming back in and calving two months from now. And into the deep freeze. What a sunrise, just an absolute treat. Yeah, we're back in the case loader, pushing some snow. After a big snowfall like the one we just had, you're always pushing snow for a couple days. So we're just doing that this morning. Clearing snow is always an afterthought of building and that was definitely the case here. We're in between barns and corrals and I gotta scrape it all back this way and then I can push it down our feed alley there. A lot of snow also blows in here, so even if it's not really snowing outside, uh, the snow still finds itself in this little area between buildings. Pretty annoying, pretty tight, super easy to nick a post or the fence or a barn. So we gotta be careful, but we'll get this area cleared out here. Took a break from pushing snow, pull up to the calf barn. Dad's grabbing a round bale and we're gonna be bedding up one of the calf barns or calf pens this morning. We used to do this with small square bales, but since me and dad resent that job with such a passion, we've decided to uh, use round bales instead. And that's what we've been doing for the last, probably almost a year now. Hopefully next summer rolls around, we're making straw bales. We only have to make a couple hundred because we just didn't use any over the entire course of winter, which would be sweet. Come on, Miriam, get that door up. Let's go. Door's being a bit of a bugger lately. We gotta get that thing dialed in. There you go. And that's how it's done. Is that right? Yep. Right on. 
Putting bedding in the corrals right now. Dad's in the bed buster out there shredding a bale. We've done this the last two days too. So this is the third day in a row we're doing it. You just gotta stay on top of it. Especially, um, we had some warm weather around zero. So all these animals are sweating. So they're kind of wet. And then it gets into a cold spell out here. So minus 25 overnight, minus 30. That's a very bad recipe for cows, very hard on them. And the best thing you can do to prevent pneumonia is put a lot of bedding in there. So that's what we've been doing. Finished putting bedding in the corrals. Since I'm in the loader, it's really easy to look down at those water bowls, make sure there's still water in there. And also it is the evening now, so I'm gonna check out all the feed bunks and make sure they still have ample feed because in the morning, if a bunk is empty, you don't really know how much more feed you could have given them. For example, this bunk right here is almost empty at about 5 p.m. in the afternoon. So that's not good at all. Uh, these girls are gonna need more than just 100 more kgs tomorrow morning. Uh, I'll tell her feeder that they should get at least 200 kgs extra tomorrow morning. You know, if you come here in the morning, bunk's empty, you don't know how long they were empty for. So you can also check for that in the evening. Uh, it's really important to make sure that cows get more than enough food when it is cold outside, because they're gonna be eating a lot more than they regularly would to try and keep their bodies warm. They just need that extra bit of energy. Uh, but we're done out here in the corrals now, so I think me and dad are gonna put bedding in the straw pack barn now. Got the straw pack opened all up. It's pretty easy to get them on the alley. Uh, we just got six flip up gates per side and uh, that locks all the cows either on the alley or on the straw pack. Today we locked them on the alley. Gonna open this door. Dad's gonna pull through with the bales. We'll cut them loose and he'll shake them out with that loader. Dad's driving the case loader into the pack bar now. We're gonna try and get it in this manure alley. I don't know that we've ever done this before. It is gonna be really tight to fit in here. Um, but yeah, we're gonna try and adjust those inlets. Well, we're not gonna get the case loader in that alley. It just does not fit. This area is too tight. So uh, he's gonna grab the New Holland. I told him they're the same size. I might be wrong. He might be wrong. This is your typical, you know, father, son farming. Um, but uh, you know, it's worth a shot, honestly. He's gonna grab that New Holland and see if it fits. I don't think it will, but could be wrong. You're right, this one is smaller. I guess Junior takes an L today, but uh, there's always tomorrow. Anyway, the problem with our inlets is that when they are theoretically supposed to be 100% closed, 
when the box thinks they're 100% closed, the control panel, they're actually still, you know, a centimeter to an inch open. And uh, we want to make sure they're 100% closed when they're supposed to be closed. Otherwise, it's always going to be continuously letting cold air into our pack barn and freezing the barn down, which is really bad and it's really cold outside. So what I'm going to do here on the panel is put those inlets to 100% shut. They're currently in auto mode, so they're probably, you know, two or 3% open. We want to make sure they're 100% closed. And then I'm going to go up in the loader bucket and I'm going to make everyone manually close 100% closed. So a bit of work, but we'll get her done. East inlet, zero, enter, back, back, back. So now those inlets are 100% closed. Oh, and you guys can see it's minus 17.6 degrees outside. And zone two, which is the furthest back in the barn is actually minus 3.6 degrees. That's probably just because we had the door open for such a long time trying to get the loader in there. We got it in eventually though, so. So we see this inlet is theoretically 100% closed, but that's how much movement it's got. So that's no good. All I gotta do is adjust right here. Loosen that off. And tighten her back down. And the reason why I'm wearing milker gloves is because after just that first one, not so much fly crap I have on my hand. Stuff doesn't freeze for some reason, which is pretty weird. It just stays greasy. That is nasty. Well, we got the entire east side of the barn adjusted. Gonna put the flip up gates back to normal, let the ladies back in their alley. And try the other side of the barn. It's always kind of fun being up in the barn. Finished adjusting those inlets. Every single one in this barn pretty much was open at least an inch on both sides. So. We closed three, six, nine, 10, 11, 22, 23 total. So that is a lot of cold air that was coming into this barn. Automatic ventilation is incredibly awesome. And especially when it's working perfectly to a T, you can't beat it. You know, the barn sits at a certain temperature and it doesn't move, but it is a lot of maintenance and it takes a lot of work to keep it functioning properly. So that's just part of it. But uh, yeah, no, hopefully we'll be good for the rest of winter. Got some cows to needle in the barn yet. Miriam's looking for them. We'll see if she can find them. Otherwise we'll help her. Fourteen eighty threes right here. So we're putting this heifer into group two now. Make it an even 12 at the end. Well, I guess you're all done for the day. Yep. 